Aaron Fletcher has been preparing for the end of the world for 15 years. He chose to be homeless in his early 20s. Now, he lives in this wagon. The whole thing is custom built to my body to the, to the very quarter inch of how tall this is. And survives off sheep's milk. Every 400 years, um, societies collapse. Oh, that's good. And we're overdue. I spent three days with Aaron in rural Oregon, documenting his attempt to live completely off-grid. Yeah. Fresh sheep milk uh, latte. Very creamy. Aaron says his sustainable solutions could help millions. And my entire life is, is a constant, ongoing experiment. But is this way of life healthy? Or has Aaron taken prepping too far? Good sheep. Yeah. People walk walk their dogs through here all the time and stuff. Mostly everything Aaron owns fits inside the cart he designed himself. Yeah, bicycle wheels. It's his bedroom. And then cover up. His kitchen. And his bathroom. Literally sit right here and just poop into it. And then what do you do with the bag? And then throw it away. In a garbage can? Yeah. Good sheep. You hear her grunting? That, that's her like a pig, like, like she's really happy right now. Most of his diet comes from JC, happy. She's like a rebellious teenager. Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. And the animal that pulls his cart. Rabbit man, yeah. He knows his name. He's just a big love bug. Half gallon of, uh, of sheep milk uh, provides 2,100 calories. So each sheep can feed three people. He also turns their wool into clothing using just his hands and a cardboard box to shape the felt. One sheep fleece is enough to make a full hoodie, and that hoodie is going to be thick, and it'll last like five years at least. Um, the very smallest scraps that I have I use to make patches and to make uh, toilet paper. Sometimes Aaron hunts wild animals, like raccoons. He cooks on this solar camping oven he bought online and their combination between a thermos and a greenhouse. Then I guess I'm going to be eating uh, raccoon for uh, the next week. I've eaten fox, raccoon, and coyote. I hear possum is really good. Today, he's making ground lamb seasoned with foraged plants. This is mugwort from uh, right down the road, and this is a uh, purslane. The meat was a gift from a local farmer and he tops it all off with cheese aged on his wagon. And it's probably the equivalent of like a one-year aged cheddar. Aaron avoids using money. Instead, he works for local farmers in exchange for food or a safe place to park his wagon. I'm advertising my main service, which is farm handing and farm sitting. Go ships, go! Chick, 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 chickens, they love fresh water. Today, he's cleaning out the chicken coop. Uh, this is the type of job that farms and farmers really don't like to have to do. Open up and close the, the greenhouse daily. That's pretty much all I have to do in exchange for, for, uh, for staying out here. And it takes forever. He uses YouTube to share his message with others. Thank you to all my new supporters. And his channel has started to generate a small but steady income. I would like for people to take away um, from this footage that there is an alternative way, there's a more purposeful job for you uh, that has much more time available uh, and much more peace, um, and it's outside the artificial um, economies cities. Uh, when I'm editing, I edit with uh, just iMovie. It, I, I, one-handed, I edit entirely one-handed with this thing. Solar panels allow Aaron to charge his devices on the go. This is a 150 watt uh, ATEM power solar panel. Uh, this is my 500 watt hour battery that my subscriber sent me. And for things like his portable freezer. Um, I've got him plugged into my friend's uh, outlet here. Aaron's latest idea is turning his sheep's milk into ice cream popsicles. That's interesting. I, I put sea salt in it too. He's headed into town to give out free samples. People pay, pay $5 a piece for like Haagen-Dazs 
Yeah, I don't know. I just feel bad about trying to charge money for In this part of Oregon, temperatures can drop below freezing in winter and top 110 degrees Fahrenheit in summer. Cool, the evaporative cooler effect. Since sheep don't sweat, you gotta add, you gotta add the sweat to them. Once Aaron gets within city limits, it's time to whip out another piece of gear. I'm gonna pull over right here and, uh, and put their poop cups on and give them a drink real quick. I forgot to put on their poop cups. Why do you have to do this? I don't have to, I just uh, want to keep it sidewalk sanitary and not, you know, give anyone reason to vilify what we're doing. Perfect. Oh my gosh! That, that one is... That one is nothing but my sheep's milk and pear syrup that I harvested from the, uh, the cut down pear trees on, on Foss. I, it's so hard to find someone who's so open. It makes it delicious ice cream. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay, well, if you want, if you want to try both. Sure, yeah. thank you so much. But Aaron's relationships with locals aren't always friendly not a very nice person like he's he's really aggressive he he's always throwing tantrums and fits like he's just aggro I mean I don't I avoid him I don't know Aaron used to live in Ashland Oregon at some point Aaron says the local police started ticketing him for walking his animals in public parks I'm gonna write you a ticket so and you I'm not taking the, the ticket I'm not taking the ticket you can do whatever you want no I'm not taking the ticket and I'm not fine. eventually the Ashland City Council passed a law requiring special permits to bring any livestock except horses into town so if Aaron Fletcher gets a horse he's gonna be able to walk it all over town that's how Aaron ended up in talent which is surrounded by orchards he built relationships with several property owners who let him stay for free. Yeah. <laughs> but just as he was getting settled, his lifestyle was put to the test in 2020. Oh my God. <laughs> that September, the Almeda fire blazed through Ashland and leveled Talents downtown. It's in our freaking orchard, no, come on. And I'm making better speed than these cars trying to evacuate. Deep guns! That was really scary. Really scary. And if I hadn't gotten out right then, then I would have uh, been trapped. Like our exit would have been engulfed in flames and we would have, wouldn't have been able to get out. By the summer of 2022, much of Talent's commercial center remained empty. Many here still live in a trailer park built by the government that was meant to be a temporary housing solution. Aaron says his way of life can offer ideas to people struggling to find a home. And those people that are in RVs could be happier, healthier, and have more purpose if they had a connection with the local small farmers that need their help right now. Aaron doesn't talk about his past much, but he didn't always live like this. Oh yeah, I was raised like everyone else on soda pop and cereal. He left his parents' home in Kansas City when he was a teenager. Yeah, I thought that that crap was going to hit the fan back 15 years ago when I voluntarily went homeless first. Uh, I thought it was going to happen within, you know, weeks or months. And uh, yeah, here it is, 15 years later or so. At first, he hopped trains with his dog, Sam. Go on. And he used to dumpster dive for food. I just dumped 24 cases of unexpired hummus and six eggs. About 10 years ago, he got more serious about sustainability. He adopted goats, then sheep, and started trying to get all his food from local sources. Aaron has been getting by with his way of living for years now, but I wanted to know how it's affecting his health. So we hired a local doctor to come give him a checkup. Hi, Dr. Duncan. McLean Duncan runs Siskiyou Vital Medicine. Your oxygen saturation is at 99%, which is perfect. So now we're gonna take your blood pressure. Good, so I got 120 over 80. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. Okay. <laughs> yeah, nice. It's gurgled. Nice. I'm taking uh, six vials. Holy shnike, why? Well, cause we're t testing a lot of things on you. Oh my God, okay. you shouldn't have told me that. You got a blanket or something we could lay down? What? Yeah, where's the Here, let's lay your jacket down and then have you lay down. 
Yeah. There you go. Come here, buddy. Come on. One, two, three. There we go. Kick his feet up. This is going to go out. There you go. There you go, dude. There you go, buddy. Whoa, wow. There you go. I passed out, huh? Yeah. Interesting. It's a lot of blood, man. Wow, interesting. I had a dream. What dream did you have? I don't know. I feel pretty good about Aaron. Uh, all exams are pretty normal. Great vitals. Uh, he's got great looking skin. Um, you know, he's a little bit thin on the, the body fat, but seems pretty good. We'll, but we'll find out more in the labs. We reviewed Aaron's blood tests. Aside from lightly elevated cholesterol, probably yeah, yeah. because of all that milk and cheese, he has no major health issues. Aaron is not completely self-sufficient. I have episodes on me going to the food bank in town. Any food that I consume from the artificial economy, I use it as fuel to then refocus on seeking out these uh, weaning ways. Shortly after we filmed with Aaron, Rosie passed away from bloat a common cause of death for livestock. But then, Happy had two lambs. Good boy! Yes. And in a new experiment, Aaron raised money from his subscribers to buy a donkey that would help him travel longer distances. Uh, this, is, this is Faith, Faith the donkey do. So far, he's had mixed results. The donkey caused a major crash that he caught on his cell phone camera. No, no, no. Oh my gosh. I'm so lucky to be alive. So lucky everyone else is still alive. So lucky they didn't involve traffic. Aaron Fletcher has sacrificed a lot since he decided to strive to become self-sufficient. But he truly believes that this is the best way he can serve others. That's, that's all I can do is, is to try to um, better all of our hope for the future and to have help getting that hope out um, is is even more hope. Has anybody ever called you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> Are you crazy? Everyone's a little crazy. <laughs> but no one's uh, it's no measure of health uh, to be profound to be it's no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. And I'm obviously the least adjusted so I would say that I'm the least crazy of anyone that I know. <laughs> I have faith that, uh, that this um, will become useful enough for enough people uh, that it will have been worth my time. I don't know if I'll ever see it and I don't really care. Um, if, I, if I see it, I just, uh, I'm just grateful that, um, that that I'm doing something that's uh, more purposeful than what I wasn't doing before. <laughs> yeah.